Good morning, TGH. Welcome to church, virtually, of course. Um, but we're so excited to have you this morning. We're so excited to worship with you. So sing with us, clap with us, cheer in your houses, and we're just going to get to it, all right? All right. God's good.
believe it's working for me. Come on, see. I don't have to worry because it's working for me. Working for me. It's working for me. It's working for me. It's working for me. Oh, I don't have to worry. I don't have to worry because it's working for me. 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 Because he's intentional. He's intentional. for joining us online. 
So today, uh, what I want to know is, I know in the season we've all had to tap into some new skills that we didn't have before. Some of you guys have become your own nail tech, your own barber, I think you've become your own chef. So what I want to know is, what new skill have you tapped into in this season? If you're watching at home with friends and family, turn to your neighbor and share, and also turn to the chat and share. We're going to give you 30 seconds to share what new skill you've tapped into, and that 30 seconds starts now. that you learned during quarantine. All right, welcome back, church. We want to thank you guys so much for participating. Thank you for engaging with us in the chat. I know for me, listen, I've tried to become my own personal trainer a few times, but the furthest I've gotten is still in people's workouts from the park. So if you have any suggestions, please drop it in the chat and let me know. You know, we cannot wait until the day we're able to physically come and corporately worship together. But for now, this is how we're going to be having service for the foreseeable future. So if you are looking to um, connect uh, with more community, if you want to chat more about the service, or if you want to come and just receive prayer, we want to invite you to join us in our digital lobby right after service. There, our prayer team is waiting to pray with you, and we have people from the Connect team waiting to greet you. And if you're brand new, they will help you fill out a digital Connect card. That way you can stay in the loop of all the things that are going on in the life of our church. We also invite you guys to take advantage of the Care Card. That is the place where you can share any tangible needs that you or your family may have during this time. It's also the place where you can share any prayer requests or praise reports. We pray over those weekly as a staff, and we would really love to hear from you guys. Also, to our parents and caregivers, we do have a TGH Kids lesson plan that you can follow along with us right from your home. So the information for that and all the other things that I mentioned will be in the description box below, and you'll also find them at thegatheringharlem.com. And now lastly, this is a very, very special Sunday. We yeah. are celebrating our beloved brother, yeah. Nate. Yeah. Yes, give it up for Nate as he goes and plants his own church in the Bronx, and we want you guys to celebrate with us. So we want to invite you guys to join us virtually on our Instagram Live today at 5 p.m. We cannot wait to see you guys there. So now we're going to transition into a time of generosity, and I'm going to invite Maria to come and join us. Good morning, church. My name is Maria, and I'm the kids director here at TGH, and I'm here to usher us into a time of generosity. So I'd like to remind you that here at TGH, we have three ways to give. You could go to thegatheringharlem.com. You can text any amount, 284321, or you can download the Church Center app. We also have a COVID-19 relief fund where you can donate to help people in our community affected by COVID with their tangible needs. And so now we're gonna be in the book of Galatians, chapter five, verses 22 through 25, which is one of my favorite verses, and it says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Yes. Those who belong to Christ Jesus nailed their passions and desires of their sinful nature to the cross and crucified them there. Amen. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. And so this morning, I would like to focus on the fruit of the Spirit of goodness, of goodness. And fruit means a work or a result. So the Holy Spirit is doing this work in us. And the result of that is goodness. And so goodness is not just do, not just being good, not just that things are good, but doing good. Come on, that's doing good. good. And so goodness is found in our actions. That's right. And so I have a testimony this morning. Um, my family has been deeply um, affected by COVID. And so every week it's it's my cousins or it's my one-year-old nephew. Wow. And then the last people affected in my family were um, my mother and my stepfather. Wow. And so during this time, um, I learned to really to trust 
in God in a whole different way. Yeah. And to know that in this season, he is so good. Yeah. And um, I can say that my family has seen the goodness of the Lord Ooh. in this family because of the goodness of our church. Wow. And so um, because my family was sick, they couldn't work. And it started to affect their finances. And so um, not only was my mom sick, but she was unsure of how they, they would pay the rent, how they would get the things that they need um, to pay the bills. And so um, she reached out to her community, to the kingdom, and asked for prayer. And when she reached out to TGH, she got um, a response right away. And someone prayed with her wow. and um, found out what her needs were. And because of our COVID-19 relief fund, my family found the relief that they need wow. and got their needs met. Praise God. And so I praise God. Um, that um, my family has seen his goodness, yes. and it is because of the fruit of the Spirit in us, the, the work that the Holy Spirit has done in us to show our goodness through our generosity. That's so good. And so my charge is to, to keep, let's keep it up. Yes. Let's show our goodness to um, anyone who asks of it. Yes. Whether it's that they need help with the rent, yes. whether it's that they need an ear, yes. let's be um, generous in all ways. And so let's bow our heads in prayer. Amen. Lord, I ask you that you um, do a work in us, Lord, so that we can be radically generous in this Amen. season, Lord. Help us to be a blessing to everyone that we encounter, Lord. Give us the knowledge and the wisdom to know um, in which ways our community needs us to be generous, Lord. We love you and we thank you and we ask these things in your holy name.
cloudy days are gone I can sing to you this song I just want to say that I love you more than Just want to tell you, yeah. Lord, I love you. 
Good morning, family. Welcome to the Blessings Club. I know you've heard of the Breakfast Club, but this is the Blessings Club. No, I'm just playing with y'all. How y'all feeling this morning, y'all? How y'all feeling? Talk to me. Talk to me. How y'all feeling? So this, as you guys know, is Nate's final Sunday at TGH. How you feeling, Nate? It's wild. I, it's I, crazy. It's hard to believe. It's hard to believe. It's, it's, it's here. It's here. It's here. And it's been a long journey here. I mean, as you guys know, Nate is a day one, A1. I mean, he's as day one as they come. <laughs> he was a part of the original OG, triple OG core team that helped start this church. In fact, um, I, I remember um, our very first meeting. Um, it was at a coffee shop in Watch Heights, and Nate was just coming out of his last church experience, and 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 he was kind of just like, man, I don't know what God is calling me to next. I don't know where God wants me to go. And I sat down and I said, listen, bro, I said we're gonna plant this church that God has called us to lead, where it's gonna become a movement of justice, love, and mercy, and it's not just gonna impact Harlem, but it's gonna impact the city. But guess what? I ain't got nothing but um. 10 people in my living room right now. You want to come be a part of it? And and Nate just looked at me and he was like, first of all, like, I'm a white guy. Like, I don't know if you noticed that. Like, like, yeah. like uh, I'm a white guy. Um, you know, this is Harlem, you know, Justice, Harlem. you know, Harlem, Harlem. And I'm as Harlem as they come, as y'all know. I don't got to explain that. Um, but yet Nate uh, said, you know, I'm going to pray about it. Um, and he did. And now that church that started with 12 people in my living room, um, when I first met him, which was just a dream, begging for permission to live, is now a movement um, that is reaching hundreds of people um, in New York City and thousands through, through podcasts across the world and sermons. So, Nate, um, you have been a core person. You have been faithful to God's call um, on your life at this church. And about a year and a half ago, Nate came to me and he said, you know, PK, God has been stirring some things on the inside of me. And I don't know what this means. I don't know what God is saying or what he may be leading me to next, but I think I want to start a church. And I looked at Nate and I said, boy, if you're going to start a church, you better be three things. You better be sure of three things. You better be called. You better be courageous. And you better be crazy. <laughs> because you gotta be crazy You gotta be cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs To try to start a church Because of how difficult it is And all of the battles you're gonna have to fight And there's nothing that has stretched me and my family More than starting this church But there's nothing that has blessed me and my family More than starting this church You know, the bigger the blessing, the bigger the battle And so I told Nate, I said Are you sure you're ready for this? And he said, I am and so um, over the course of the last year, we did um, an, an, an intense um, assessment um, uh, mentorship process where he went to multiple assessments. Um, he did a one-year apprentice here at TGH. And that brings us to today, which is Nate's final Sunday. He is completing his apprenticeship, and he is getting ready uh, to go plant his church. But because Nate is family, y'all know we couldn't just let him walk out the door. We had to, we had to sit him down, and we had to hear... Um, what God is calling him to do, how we can support it, um, and what this is going to look like going forward between TGH and his church. So let me pray for our time, and then we're going to jump right into this, y'all. I hope y'all are excited, um, because even though this moment has been crazy, God is still on the move. Bow me in prayer. Father God, we thank you, God, that you are bigger than this moment. We thank you that you are still moving and still expanding your kingdom, even while um, everything else around us is falling apart. And God, we pray that in this conversation, you will inspire us, you will um, increase us, uh, but more than anything, God, uh, you will get glory out of what you're doing in this city. It is an honor and a privilege to be a part of the move that is so much bigger than us, God. Nate and I both are just vessels that you are pouring your presence and power out of into these, into the, into the city and into these communities that you love way more than we do. So we ask all of these things now in Jesus' name, and you bless this time. Amen. 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 So let's jump right into this. All right. Um, <clears throat> let's just start from the jump. For those who don't know Nate, um, for those who may not be familiar with you, who are you and how did you get to this point? Yeah, well, um, 
before I get into that, let me just shout out your pastor, yeah. PK Man. over here, for uh, just being someone that is leading this church, leading this movement, who uh, believed in uh, nobody like me uh, four mm. years ago to be a part of this. Uh, I really, did, I really <laughs> did respond when he asked me. I was like, I'm a white guy. And That's really what he I, said, y'all. I don't know he why really you're talking to that. me. I literally don't know. I why. said that is why I'm talking to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but you know, just all that you have poured into me, all that you have invested in me, um, it's really priceless. And, um, I don't know y'all, you, you have an amazing pastor. Um, so if you ever forget it, be reminded right now, show him some love. Um, he's been pastoring you through this crazy season of COVID-19 and, um, I can't imagine being a part of a better team than, wow, than being man. here at TTH. So I mean, he's trying to shed those that. tears, man. <laughs> I'm just trying to just trying not to cry. Um, but thank and let me that. answer your question uh, you. a little thank bit about you. about me. Um, so I was uh, born in Virginia Beach, Virginia, on the East Coast. Hey. Uh, then when we were uh, six years old, my family moved um, to be closer to my mom's side of the family in Oklahoma. Mm-hmm right in the middle of the country. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's where I grew up, um, went to went to school. Um, my dad is a PK. Hey. Or I'm, I'm a PK. You're a PK. My dad is a pastor. Is pastor yeah. um, and uh, so I grew up very much, you know, a part of church. Uh, yeah. I gave my life to Christ when I was 10 years old. Wow. Um, at a old school revival. Oh, wow. Uh, somebody that's who's throwback. been in church that's... for a long time. <laughs> that's this it. Is, a revival's where you had church every night of the week. That's it. You had a guest speaker. You didn't get out. I'm just tired. I just want to go home. Worship. There was an offering. I love Jesus. There I just want to go home. There was a sermon, everything. <laughs> um, but it was during that, during that revival that I really uh, came to understand the gospel mm. for myself. I, mm. had no, I knew a lot about God. I knew a lot about the Bible. Mm. But I didn't really realize that Jesus had died for me. That's good. I kind of thought like, oh, Jesus died for everybody else in their yeah. sins. Yeah. Not me. I don't, Not me. Yeah. I don't need a savior. Yeah, that's good. And that's when I realized, like, oh, I really do need a savior, um, just as anybody else. And I gave my life to Christ um, at 10, 10 years old, um, mm-hmm. and uh, I've been walking with Him ever since. Um, I came to New York City uh, thirteen years ago in two thousand seven. Wow. Um, I felt um, so. You're an official New Yorker. <laughs> See, I don't know I guess, how y'all measure yeah. what an official New Yorker is. Yeah, I've heard five years. I've heard five like, years. Nah, 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 nah I ain't years, five years. Yeah, yeah. You had to have gotten kicked out of two apartments. <laughs> right. You got to definitely um, have pest control on deck. Like, <laughs> you ain't a real New Yorker yeah. unless you really, really been through the trenches. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so you, you, you qualify. Yes. Um, so that was uh, right out of college. I felt good. Uh, that God might be calling me mm. to New York City. That's good. Um, I came here, uh, quickly fell in love with the city. That's good. Um, but very different from where I grew up uh, in, you know, a million different ways. You couldn't, yeah. Um, but Couldn't be more different. Yeah, like, like you said, I've been here that long, and, you know, I've had a lot of opportunities to yeah. to go somewhere else, to, to go back home. Yeah. Um, but I've just felt very... Very convicted that this is where God has me, and He's really called me to the city, and right. um, so I've made it my home. And you know, I'm I'm That's planning on living and dying here. That's it. Um, this is my city for sure. And um, yeah, so uh, like PK said, I was a part of a couple different churches um, in the city, a couple different church plants, mm-hmm. and um, I didn't realize it then. Yeah. But these these churches I was a part of before really. Uh, reaching people like me that were uh, transplants. Yes. Um, and, uh, you know, probably we're not helping with the gentrification that of is happening in our city. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I, all very, like, good intentioned mm-hmm. and preaching the gospel and doing good things, but there was a piece there that I was completely blind to. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, I, I was coming to realize that, and then that's when we got connected. Yep. And um, yeah, it's crazy how we got connected because Nate was going off on social media. And I'm like, who is this white guy going? Oh, it was like 2016. So y'all know 2016. That's like infamous. 2016, 2020. I don't even got to explain what happened. But in 2016, he's going off on white supremacy. He's talking about Michael Brown. He's talking about Ferguson. He's talking about um, uh, the 45. He's talking about just all these things. And, And I'm like. 
who is this white guy? Like, who is this guy? Because I had seen Nate in passing, mm. but I'm like, I got to sit down and have a conversation with him and invite him to be a part of this church. So talk to us a little bit about that journey. How yeah. did you, oh, how did yeah. you, coming from rural Oklahoma, <laughs> right? how did you become an anti-racist coming from yeah. rural Oklahoma? Uh, the grace of God. Come uh, on. I, period. Because, um, you know, without that, I, I feel like I would be just as unwoke and unaware Come on. as I have always been, except God messed up my life um, <laughs> which he does uh, is it, isn't it, he beautiful he, 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 just stop. he just keeps doing it throughout your that's life it. and disciples of following Jesus he doesn't make your life easier he messes it up um, for his glory but uh, that's not, that should be the part two of the book of James that we just came out <laughs> right, of there you go. Like, like, um, like God will mess up your life but count it all joy like you'll be happy in the exactly, end count it all joy. <laughs> you'll be happy in the um, end so uh, yeah you mentioned Ferguson Missouri yeah. when Michael Brown was killed yep um, and my best friend, Matt, uh, he grew up in that area. Yep. Um, and he, he was like very invested in everything yes. going on. This is his hometown that's yep. like on fire and, yep. you know, um, he's just on social media like crazy. Yep. And he gave me a totally different perspective on what was going on there. It's right. like, you know, I... My family, my extended family, we've been a part of the white flight out yep. of certain neighborhoods, yep. and now they've become so sort of um, systemic realities of right, it. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Predominantly black, and you know the police force is mm-hmm. predominantly white, mm-hmm. not from the area. All the, all that kind of stuff Come on. just like opened my eyes to uh, racial inequality um, and injustice. That I, you know, as a white man, I. Uh, can be very mm-hmm. um, unaware of mm-hmm. and never be uh, pushed back on, especially especially back then. Yes, um, it's crazy how how many people have posted Black Lives Matter now. Yes, <laughs> Nate was doing it before it was a hashtag and <laughs> yeah. before it was trendy, y'all. Like before, before was everybody was yeah. doing it and it was popular in 2020. He was doing it before the pandemic. Yeah, so, we got receipts. So man, I um, I felt like uh, you know, like like mm-hmm. you said, I was transitioning out of my old um, mm-hmm. church and I was thinking about, you know, I was in a transition time That's in it. my life and um, I knew that I was passionate about a few things. That yeah. God was still, uh, I was passionate about New York City. Yep. I was passionate about um, church planting. Yep. Um, in some capacity. Whatever that looked um, like. And I was, like God was calling me into Whatever, whatever this like race stuff was, yeah. um, I needed to learn, um, and so I decided to enter into a, a season of listening and learning for three years um, because I uh, also went to. I decided to go back to school to seminary. Yeah, it was a three-year program. And I was like, okay, uh, my life is going to be all about learning and listening um, in in every aspect. And that's what you uh, so uh, you know, I. I Came to TGH, a yep. predominantly black and brown yep. church. Yep. The um, first thing Nate told me was, I want to spend a season of my life submitting to black and brown leadership. Yeah. That's when I was like, oh, this is my guy right here. <laughs> he gets it. And that's, I mean. And that's what he did. I don't know where that came from. The yeah. Lord. The Lord. Three plus years later. Gave me that. We're here. Yeah. Um, Amen. Yeah. So, so here I am. That's good. Um, that's wild. It's a while. Yeah, it's I, crazy. Th- these are things like I could never, I could never like guess that this would happen. I, I could never um, dream that I would be where I am right now. Yeah. Um. And and doing what I'm doing. Yeah, I know. You know, being <laughs> on our to- being on my talk show is like I could have never, <laughs> could have never have dreamed that this is what expansion looked like either. Like, isn't God amazing? What are we doing? <laughs> Not today, like. All right, so let's switch gears a little bit. Um, thank you so much, Nate. Um. Mm. The Bible says in the book of Habakkuk to write the vision and make it plain. Mm. Um, it also says that without vision, the people perish. Um, and I actually think um, for you guys watching who are leaders, I think vision is a leader's most powerful weapon. Mm. Um, it is the most powerful tool in your tool ber- belt, um, regardless of what you lead and at what capacity you lead. Um, the quality of your leadership is always determined by your vision. And so um, I want to talk a little bit about your vision. I want to talk about the vision that God has given yeah. you for the Bronx, for your church plant, and why that vision is essential. Why basically another church in the Bronx? Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> let me just share like um, like kind of why I've, I feel drawn to the Bronx. Why mm-hmm. the Bronx? Um, so the past uh, few years, I um, 
for the past almost 10 years, I've lived in Inwood uh, in Upper Manhattan, um, and a lot of the a lot of the relationships that I have are with um, youth there. Yep. I worked at a middle school for uh, a number of years. Talk about it. And um, did mentorship. Yeah, I've, for I've, years. I mentored um, a, a high school student. He just graduated this year. Come on. Um, and I just I began to realize like just the breadth of relationships that I had um, with youth, specifically in. Um, the Heights and then in the Bronx and uh, I feel like uh, as I've been as I've wrestled with like yeah you know, I feel like God is calling me to to plant my own church where would I do that and right. we talked a lot about that I, was, I wrestled a with that so much about that. and God showed me one day uh, Nathan look at all of the people that I've connected you with that's so good look at all of the youth leaders that I've connected you with that's so good um, and I started to dream about like man um, there really is a need for a gospel-centered, young, mm-hmm. exciting church like the gathering in mm-hmm. a lot of ways. Um, because so many people that I work with, I'm just like, you guys are amazing, right? And like, there needs to be something to um, to uh, to lead in the gospel in a space for that them. way, right. a yeah. space for them to really thrive. That's it. Um, so uh, the the vision for our church um, is, and right now we don't really have a name for the church yet. I'm yeah, just, I'm I was about to say, I know the, some of y'all uh, been yeah. asking, trying to fish for it. <laughs> yeah, I got to talk to this man. You know, he. Yeah, we're, we're the just Lord gave it, him the vision. It's it's in the Fordham area of the Bronx. Yes, um, but the vision is is really a, a Bronx that thrives through the hope, healing, and hype of Jesus. Oh. Okay. <laughs> So let me break that okay. down. Okay, okay, break that down, brother. Break, break it down. Break so it down. So first of all, it's about the Bronx. It's the vision is for a Bronx. That I love that. Not just. I love that. Not for a church. Yeah, but for right. the Bronx. Exactly. Exactly. I love that. Um, I want this church to be of, by, and for the Bronx. Come on. Uh, through and through. Talk uh, about that. But it's a Bronx that not just survives that's but it. thrives. Ooh. Um, and I think that's I like important that. because the, the New York City in general, like you're just trying to survive. 80% of your energy is put toward just surviving. Yeah. Uh, I feel like in the Bronx, it might be 95, right. 100%. Yeah, that's a um, fact. <laughs> yeah, if you get if you grow up in the Bronx, like, you anywhere you different. go in the world. You built a little different. Like, oh, oh, wow, you're from the Bronx. That's wow. it. Um, but God doesn't want us to just survive. Mm. He wants us to thrive. Right. Oof. You know, John 10, 10 says it. that Jesus has come to give us life and life more abundantly. I life it. to the full. That's it. Um, and that's just not a, a ticket to heaven. No. That's in our life today, right yeah. now. On Jesus earth says as it is in heaven. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. It that's it. Right Ooh. here in front of you. Okay, he preaching. So, a Bronx that thrives uh, through the hope, healing, and hype of Jesus. I love it. All right. This comes from uh, Luke chapter 4, verses 18 mm-hmm. and 19, mm-hmm. where Jesus gives his vision for his church. Mm. He says that the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. That is the hope that we're talking about. Good news. News. All right. I want this church to be about good news, not bad news. Here to tell you everything is terrible. Nope. Nobody needs to tell anybody. (laughs) There are problems in this world. We know that we need hope. Too bad. That's what half of the churches are good at. Exactly. Uh, Telling people the bad news. Jesus goes on. He says, he sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind. Okay. That is healing. Healing. Man, uh, especially in this season, I think healing is so, so huge. Um, And I'm not just talking about like a spiritual, yeah, a spiritual uh, healing. This is, like I said, uh, you know, Jesus has come to give us a a complete life. That's it. To the full. That's it. It's not just about. Holistic healing. Having a, a good experience with God or feeling good spiritually. That's right. But really healing in every aspect of our life, whether that be mental, uh, physical, emotional, mm. relational. Um, I mean, I really believe that the gospel speaks to all of those things. That's so good. Um, and so often we dilute it down we to do. the spiritual stuff. You know, that reminds me of that verse where, where Jesus tells John the Baptist, you know, go and tell John. That the signs of the kingdom are here, mm. right? That the dead are raised, that the blind see, that the lame walk. Right. This is holistic healing. It's not yeah. just a spiritual healing, but it's a holistic, it's, it's justice. It's flourishing. Exactly. That's good. Yeah. So then Jesus finishes with, 
that he's here to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Ooh. That's where I get hype. Hype. <laughs> oh, oh they're going to get hype. Because here's the thing. The year of the it's Lord's the favor comes from uh, the book of Leviticus. That's it's right. this uh, instruction that God gives to his people to forgive all the debts, to set uh, people free. Mm. And um, it's it's this uh, whole season, a new uh Age that age. Jesus yep. brings into That's reality. So the, the year of the Lord's That's favor. Good. So That's it, it really brings it all together. A Bronx that thrives through the hope, healing, and hype of Jesus. And love it. of Jesus, y'all. That is really important. We're that. not just out here to make people happy, to right. have a good thing, to right. like work right, right, on right, your right. self-esteem. This is about Jesus. Everything we do flows from Jesus Christ. That's good. So that that's wow. that's just a vision. I hope y'all are hype. <laughs> I mean, I feel it. I feel it, man. It's a powerful vision, and you are the right person to embody mm. that work because that is who you are at your core. So um, yeah, it makes sense that God would give you that. So I again, I want to shift gears now. Mm. So you know that we are the wokeity woke 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 church. <laughs> wokeity woke woke woke. I, I, I think that goes without saying, but if you're watching for the first time, we woke it woke, 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 okay? And being a church that um, at its core is passionate about justice and all forms of justice, not just police brutality, um, not just um, um, education reform, but, but one of the biggest and most silent ways that um, injustice flourishes, which is in housing, discrimination, mm, mm. gentrification. Um, and obviously, this city has had a lot of issues, especially communities of color, with gentrification and and the the, the tearing down of what's been established in order yeah. to build up stuff for people who are not from the neighborhood um, and who are usually racially other. Mm. And so now, um, with that being said, um, how do you handle the conversations about being a white man mm. going into a predominantly black and brown community um, and planting a church? How is this church not going to further gentrify the community, yeah. but instead dignify the community. Yeah. Oof. <clears throat> There's a lot there. Yeah. Talk about it. <laughs> um, man, I, I want to start with uh, the kind of our core values That's um, good that, that I'm setting forth for our church. Um, the first one is about Jesus. That's good. Um, I kind of talk about there's four things that this church is about. The mm -hmm. first thing is that we're about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Um, and I look to Jesus as our model. Uh, when Jesus uh, came to earth uh, through the incarnation, you know, when he moved into the neighborhood, he moved in as a first century Jewish man. Mm. And he spoke to first century Jewish issues and, mm. and thing. He, all his stories that he told were spoken in the vernacular of the people in ways that they could understand. That's why there's so many uh, agrarian and Oof. farming kind yes. of uh, stories that Jesus tells um, because it, that, that's, people can understand that. And so, uh, you know, when you come, uh, when you come to, to uh, any place, um, you need to have that same kind of posture as that's a Christian right. that... That um, that I am coming uh, to a place that has a history that has a uh, a real context that I'm gonna that I need to understand that I need to enter into That's good. Um, to not be this this alien um, mm -hmm. um, presence or whatever. That's right. That's right. Um, but um, the second thing that uh, I talk about is that we're gonna be about the block. Mm. Um, Come on, <laughs> talk about like the that. block. So we're about I love the block. block. I'm the hood pastor. I love the block. <laughs> so here's catch the me thing. up in front of the chicken spot. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm back. <laughs> so I, I, you know, I really do believe this with any form of ministry, but That's especially good. with, uh, you know, with me being a white guy, mm. um, this has got to be key uh, because I really want to come not with all the answers, right. but with questions. That's good. Because um, I, I really believe that, um, you know, in any place. Yeah. It's the, the people on the block. They know what the problems are. They do. They also know what the solutions are. They do. And usually they have connections to the resources in order to, to fix those, those That's problems. That's good. Yeah. Often it's just the, uh, the motivation, the organization, the connections that need to be made That's to right. do that. That's so good. Uh, and I, I believe that because the Holy Spirit is at work in all places. That's right. Um, he goes before us. That's right. Um, 
So my attitude is to, to listen to people, to ask that. questions, to, to really follow their lead. I'm, I'm not coming with like this whole master plan. That's it. How we're going to do things, That's how it. our service is going to be, how our ministries are going to be. That's it. I want our ministries to, to grow out of uh, what people tell us the needs That's are. That's so important, Nate, because so often in these discussions, the white community comes into the hood paternalistic. Mm. Right. And so, and so you're coming in. Not with a spirit of paternalism, but rather you're saying this community isn't powerless. First of all, stop calling exactly. any people powerless. Mm-hmm. That is dehumanizing, and, and nobody made in God's image is powerless. Mm-hmm. That's right. Nobody. So these people aren't powerless. No people are powerless. They're unheard. Mm-hmm. And what you're saying is, I'm coming into a community that has not been heard, and I'm going to listen. Right. That's beautiful. Yeah. So uh, about Jesus, about the block, and then we're about dignity and diversity. Oof. Um, I think that, uh, I mean, that's, that's just, not only is it important for the Bronx, um, because the Bronx is diverse. Yeah. Um, I got this ridiculous, ridiculous <laughs> quote that Go I ahead. found about the Bronx. It says, the U.S. Census considers the Bronx to be the most diverse area in the country Mm. And then this crazy percent here. Mm. There is an 89.7% chance that any two residents chosen at random would be from a different race or ethnicity. Wow. wow. I don't know how they got that <laughs> percentage That's about to say. by any means. I'm going to tell but you. I don't know. I mean. That's crazy. I don't know if it's an amalgamation of like, you got, you know, somebody who's, they, they're part Puerto Rican, they're part yep. Dominican, they're yep. part Jamaican, yep. they're part Italian, yep. whatever yep. it might yep. be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, to get that. But. I mean, the Bronx, like I said, is one of the most diverse places in the country. It's not necessarily the most united place Mm. in the country. Um, You know, along all of those lines that I just named, there's a lot of beef there. There's not a lot of uh, solidarity and unity. And I believe that we find that through Jesus Christ. That he's the one who brings us together into the new family of Jesus. I love that. You know, we're still... We still um, dignify yeah. and celebrate our differences, but yeah. we come together in a new family. That's we don't, good. We don't, That's good. We don't cut off our old family. No. We still have... It's a kind of like a both ends. That's it. Like, <laughs> we're, we're part of the new family of Jesus. You know, there's some things we're going to have to let go. Some bad practices, bad some unhealthy stuff. practices. You know, but um, we got to celebrate um, who we are. When, when we become Christians, we don't... We don't, uh, we're not following the white Jesus and, and no, kind of whitewashed um, our faith to kind of, uh, what is it, the, uh, the melting pot yeah. of America that melts down all of our differences into being a one, white one, America. Right, zit, that's it. One tub yeah. of a uh, slop. That's what it becomes. <laughs> right. Just slop. When yeah. you melt down the differences. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's going to be hugely mm. important. And the last one is we're about biblical justice. That's a fact. Um, and that's got to be... Like, in the Bronx, of all places, we, we have to talk about that because the Bronx has, uh, throughout the whole history of New York City, yeah. has been um, a place of slavery, mm-hmm. of... Um, it has. I mean, that's how it started out. Mm-hmm. Uh, slavery and then um, of people being pushed out mm-hmm. of, uh, you know, poor people being pushed out of um, other parts of the city... And then um, in the 20th century, all of the redlining, they just pretty much drew a, ma- a circle around, around most the of the Bronx. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is why it is uh, such a diverse place full of minorities um, because no one was able to get any kind of investment there. Right. And the government, both federal and state, incentivized yes. white people to move out into the suburbs. Mm. All the manufacturing moved out into the mm. suburbs. All the financial capital moved out mm-hmm. into the suburbs. And that's why the Bronx was burning, because mm-hmm. landlords could get more money off of burning their own building Buildings. instead wow. of leasing it. trying to get any kind of lease, because there was no economic um, yeah. investment there. So yeah. these are things that like and think about have, that. we have to talk about. We, we have to talk about justice. But And at the same time, like, that's what makes the Bronx so beautiful. Like for those of you that don't know, like I got mad love for the Bronx. This is this is why we're supporting and partnering with Nate. Like I have so I, I I mean literally when my family moved out of Harlem, we moved to the Bronx. My dad still lives in the Bronx. So I've lived as many years in, in the Bronx as I have in Harlem. So I love the Bronx 
as much as I love Harlem. I just don't get to talk about it as much because we're together in Harlem. Mm -hmm. But this is an opportunity for me to just talk about the Bronx. The Bronx has been a place, as Nate said, that has been systemically disinvested in. Mm -hmm. And yet from that very same place, the number one export out of America, hip hop, was yep. born. Mm -hmm. The Bronx is a community that knows how to do the most with the littlest. Mm -hmm. The Bronx is a community that knows how to make something major out of scarcity. And yeah. so just know, Nate, you, you might walk through that neighborhood in Fordham. You might walk through the Bronx and not see much, but there's more there than meets the eye. Oh, yeah. yeah. And if oh, what yeah. you see is all you see, then you do not see all there is to be seen. <laughs> I think the prophet Kirk Franklin said that. <laughs> um, so that's good. Oh, yeah. um, Nate, give us one practical thing before we go to the next one. Like, like once, what's one practical thing you're doing right now um, to kind of embody these? Maybe it's picking your core team. Maybe it's like... Who you're talking to in community? Oh. Like, what's one practical oh, thing you're doing? Yeah, yeah. Um, to be mindful. Of, I mean, of for my core presence. team, uh, the people that I'm talking to are all New York and Bronx natives. Great. Um, like, Great. I really want to be, and people of color. Great. Um, I'm going to be the only white person on the core team. <laughs> Sounds about right. Um, which is like, yeah, <laughs> demographically about right, like one percent or That's so. It. Um, and so beyond that, like as I build my um, my uh, governing board. Yeah. Also, people of color, New Yorkers. Um, That's great. So, like, I, I'm thinking about the power structures. Who That's has it. the power? That's it. Um, and it's not going to be a That's bunch it. of white people that are not even from the city. That's it. Um, which often happens. So. That's that's a very practical go. thing yep. that I'm doing. Very practical, and that's why I want you to give. I want you to give that to yeah. us. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about how you're going to plant the church. What, what denomination are you working with? Um, that's a question I'm sure some people may have. Um, just who are you going to be working with? What denomination? What's the affiliation? Yeah, yeah. So uh, the, dom the denomination I'm working with is called the Christian and Missionary Alliance, or the CMA. Okay. Um, and um, I just recently in the past few years got connected with them. Uh, by going to seminary at Nyack College, which is here in hey, New York City. Yo, we got so many Nyack people. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a, great, it's a great school. They got <laughs> undergrad and graduate. That's it. Uh, I feel schools. like we got a whole graduating class at this church. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, that that's that denomination. Uh -huh. um, I didn't really know about them before, but, you know, I've, I've really... Uh, you know, very on the same page theologically with everything. That's great. Um, they have a, a strong presence in the tri-state area. They do. Have a lot of churches around mm -hmm. here and a very they diverse do. ethnically. Yes, they are. Um, which comes from their uh, missionary background for many years. Um, you know, they've reached people all over the world. And then as people come to New York, um, they've been a part of that denomination. So there's a lot of um, ethnic diversity there that I was like, I'm really, yeah. I'm going to need a network that That's right. is, is diverse. Um, Which is way. wise. Yeah. So um, I've been talking with them. Um, they're excited uh, to get started. And um, if you're interested uh, in learning more about them, you can go to metrocma.org. Nice. Metrocma.org. I'm going to write that down too. <laughs> metrocma.org. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's good. Um so a question that I've gotten a lot, and I don't know if you've gotten this, mm. but people have asked me kind of what is TGH's ongoing relationship going to be with you as you go out and you plant your church in the Bronx? Um, is this going to be a TGH? Is it oh, not a TGH, but a T G B? Right. <laughs> I don't know if you made that up. The yeah. Gathering Bronx? I don't know. But is this going to be um, um, something that we're going to directly put our name on or is it going to be a unique thing to you so I think this would be a great space for us yeah. to kind of talk about what is our relationship going to look like how, how will this look going forward yeah yeah I mean there's there's a lot of ways that you can plan churches and a lot of it ways really that, is. that are, are done out there yes um, but um, you know as, as we have talked like um, you know we've really uh, come to um come to the conclusion like this is really this is really Nate's thing this is really my thing that, yeah. that I want to do um, and uh, so it's going to be a totally separate yep. uh, church yep. and um, but at the same time you know we're, we're going to that's gonna it tight like that's it <laughs> TGH is always going to be a part of my story uh, you know you guys are um, obviously um, sending me out yes um, there's also a few people yes um, that are going to be coming with me to Love be a part church. of getting this started yes um, so yeah we're, I mean we're going to be doing ministry together for the city that's it for the greater city that's it um, you know 
Yeah, definitely in the future. Definitely, yeah. You know, when we have uh, our protest going on, we'll invite. Hey, Adam to be part of that. we will um, be there, <laughs> ready. And when TGH, when smoke. you have your next protest, we will be That's there it. in support. So yeah, and and um and, and I think that this is an important opportunity to, to kind of talk to our church just about like as your shepherd and as your leader and as a leader of this house. You know, it's always been a passion of mine that this church be a pipeline and not a puddle. And I've always wanted this church to be a place where we took in the various gifts that God has given us in the people of God. Because, you know, resources is not, money is not your greatest resource in leadership. People are. Hello. That's, mm-hmm. That helps somebody right there in leadership. People yep. are your greatest resource. And I've always seen people as a resource that God has entrusted to me. These are his people, not mine. Mm-hmm. And it's my mm-hmm. opportunity to steward, but it's his opportunity to lead. And, and he owns the people that he brings here. I just lead them and love them. Mm-hmm. And so when Nate came and, and I was able to point to Nate everything that I gave him, I never for once wanted Nate to feel like he had to go out and plant a gathering. Mm-hmm. Instead, I wanted Nate to be faithful to the call God had on his life. And the same is true for all of you. I want this to be a place where we pipeline people into their purpose. Where we're not a puddle that just sits there and, and is stagnant and stinking and hoarding up all the resources to ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. What I call it is kingdom ministry, not castle ministry. Yeah. And so I've gotten some questions from pastor friends of mine and things of that nature. Just like, okay, well, if you're not going to send Nate out to do a gathering then what will the gathering's relationship be with Nate? And I told him, our relationship is going to be just like if he was planting a gathering. We're going to support him financially, um, which we pledged $50,000 over the course of five years. Somebody need to clap up for that. In faith, this is what crazy faith looks like. This is what believing God beyond uh, what you see in front of you looks like. This is what leading at the level of faith and not at the level of sight looks like. We are pledging to support Nate with $50,000 over, over five years, so, so $10,000 a year, and we're asking God to not only continue to bless you guys so that you can give generously, but also for God to bless his ministry so that he can continue to raise the resources, because I'm going to be honest with y'all, 50000 is nothing. <laughs> that is not even, Nate, what, what's that going to cover? <laughs> that's not even going to cover Sundays for a year. Mm-hmm. That's not even going to cover, the cost is going to have to rent space for Sundays mm-hmm. for a year. Yeah. That's not, and not in New York City. And so that's just a drop in the, in the bucket. But for us, it was super important for Nate to be able to go out and say to all these other churches, these bigger churches who can really write big checks, like, hey, my sending church, my home church is behind us. And it's important right. for us, guys, to see the power of your generosity. That's right. To be a three-year-old church, to pledge $50,000. Well, we're turning three, but, you know, I'm just speaking. I'm speaking prophetically. Yeah. Well, we're turning <laughs> three in September, so y'all get it. Right? But, but, but to be a three-year-old church... To be supporting him at that level, y'all need to give yourself some love. If you're sitting on your couch, if right. you're sitting in your room, if you're in this room, come on, clap it up, y'all. If you're in this room, if, if, if you're on the toilet, I mean, that ain't, that's your business. But just clap it up in Jesus' name because this is a church um, that is committed to building God's kingdom. And so, no, this is not going to be a gathering. But yes, the gathering will be supporting it. Yes, the gathering will be behind it. Yes, the gathering is invested in the, in the flourishing of this city, not just our right. castle. And right. you guys should be proud that you're a part of a church that does that. So I want to challenge you to continue to be generous. Continue to help us expand God's kingdom. You may not think that your giving is making an impact. But we have not only given away thousands of dollars already to people in need in our Mm -hmm. church, but now we are helping to start another kingdom move in a borough that none of us that may not none of us may live in, but that all of us can have an eternal impact in. There are people who are going to know Jesus for eternity because of this church and because of your giving. So I challenge you now to continue to give generously. Don't look at what's don't look at what's not there. Look at what God has put in your hand and watch him multiply it. Yeah, and I want to add on to that. This is just the first TGH. This is your this first, is the first church plant to give to. Because we PK will have said many. from the beginning that he's not starting a church, we're starting a movement. It's a movement. And this is, this is one step this forward. Is the first, in that. And let me tell you, the Bronx, just the Bronx, yes. needs thousands of churches. You know how many? Thousands. Hundreds of thousands of people, millions of people just live in the Bronx. That's it. You think about that with every borough. We, there are so many new churches That's that it. are needed. I'm not... I'm not overstating it. Thousands of churches are needed Thousands. throughout this city. And uh, this is just the beginning. It's only the beginning. Like Jesus said, the harvest is plentiful, but the labor is a Exactly. Yep. So you're giving, even if you can't go, by giving, you're being a laborer 
That's you're right. being a supporter of the laborers for that do go. So so you can you can get on the rope or you can hold it. So help us continue to hold that rope. That's right. Um, so Nate, as we close, yeah, our time. I want to get a little sentimental. Aww. I want to get a little emotional. Aww. Feelings <laughs> so deep. I'm sorry, yeah. I just you know I just felt like singing for a second. <laughs> what are you gonna miss most about TGH? Man, uh, I'm gonna miss a lot of things about TGH. Um, I gotta say that. TGH was uh, and like is the the first place um, that uh, really accepted me um, mm-hmm. in, like as a being in a diverse space because um, I had grown up in majority white churches my whole life and wow. just to be um, embraced and um, as the minority right yeah exactly. <laughs> right you're the exactly. minority yeah. Um, yeah, that has been such a gift to me. I, I, I mean, um, being a part of TGH has just enriched my life in wow. so many ways. My, wow. um, I mean, I, I'm sure many of us could say the same. My, uh, you know, faith has been leveled up like hey. dozens of times. Wow. Um, the I'm I'm gonna miss uh, the, um, just the community that's being built here. The yeah. uh, being a part of. Um, being a part of something that is a, uh, a piece of history. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I, 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 I think about, um, man, in the early days, um, we, you know, we were meeting in different places before we met at the National Black Theater. Talk about and that. Remember, Talk about the grind. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> Talk about the grind. People see the glory time, now. Talk about oh, the man, grind. We were meeting in little spaces. And um, I remember you talking about um, just the history of Harlem um, and what that means to America. Yes. And um, it's just powerful to, as, <laughs> as a total outsider, in many mm. ways to be a part of a church that I really think is making history. Yeah. Um, wow. In a lot of ways. Wow. Um, I mean, the, the positive thing I can say is, like, I'm not going that far. It's not like we're not going to see each other or anything You're like a couple that. stops away on the D. Exactly. A couple stops exactly. on the four. We right there. Um, what I do want to say um, is that uh, I, I have been, much of the time, the only white guy who's been a part of this church. So, I mean, that's been a, a very interesting experience for me, a wonderful experience for me. Um but yeah, that's that's kind of the joke that <laughs> that's the running joke. We we the running joke that me and Nate have is we're losing our one white guy. So <laughs> right. we're losing um, our one white guy. So um, you know, TGH, I just want to I just want to make you aware of that. Um, and I think that um, something that I really love about this church uh, is that you're you're comfortable with being uncomfortable. Come on. It's good. Um, and that comes from your pastor because he is comfortable being <laughs> uncomfortable, okay? Yeah. Every Sunday he's getting into your kitchen, he's opening the fridge. Oh, hey. Yeah. Okay, he's, he's pushing some stuff sugar. in the bag. He's opening up all sugar. your drawers. Uh, yep. Stepping on your toes. Um, and I think that is really going to be the key. You know, when we were chatting about, like, yeah, I'm, I'm, about I'm the white guy who's yep. leaving, you're like, oh, we need to, like, we need to target white people or something. Yeah. That, don't do that. No. <laughs> Please don't do that. No. That would be like an all white church saying, yeah, oh, we, we won't a, do that. We need to target black, yeah, black yeah, people. Yeah. Like, it's not going to work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tokenism doesn't work <laughs> exactly. when it's us on the other end of the token or when it's white folks on the other end of the token. Yeah. Tokenism doesn't work. But true community is if what you works. are comfortable being uncomfortable, if you can enter into the uncomfortability, um, that is what is. That is what is going to succeed in the end, uh, to be a diverse church. Yeah. Um, I think about uh, this scripture, uh, John 1.14, uh, where it says that Jesus came full of grace and truth. That's good. 100% full of grace, but also full of truth. Right. Uh, so, TGH, we've got to be uh, a place that speaks the truth, yeah. but also has grace that's right. to balance that out that's right um because um you know you can 
You can be all about truth mm -hmm. and run people away that mm -hmm. don't agree with you. Mm -hmm. Or you can be all about grace, grace and never challenge people. And that's going to have some negative con You're, you're going to hurt people that's it. in the long run if you just have all grace but no that's truth. It. Um, so if you can be, so if you can continue to be uh, the kind of community that is comfortable with being uncomfortable, um, like you're gonna be fine. That's good. Um, and when I think about the protests that we did, come on, um, and you see the amount of white people there. That's right. Um, especially the next generation, like they they're ready. That's good. They are ready. So TGH, I want you to be ready. Ooh, I want you to be ready because they need a lot of help. They will. <laughs> when you. All of us need a lot of help. Yep. We need a lot of education. We need, um, and we need a unique place like the gathering that can be diverse. That's good. And you know, I, I have a total hope that that's going to happen. That's that's what I want to see in the Bronx as well. Right. Um, I want um, to see that kind of space be possible. That's right. Um, man, there's 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 too much. There's too much that I'm gonna oh, miss man. Um, about TGH, but. But, but yeah, just a few stops on the D train. Yeah, he right there, y'all. He right there. We gonna, you know, we gonna bring him a chopped cheese. You know, once on launch Sunday, you know, we gonna go visit him, take him a couple chopped cheeses from Harlem because you know he gonna miss that. So, um, so you can get some pastelito. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He give me pastelito. I'm gonna bring him a chopped cheese, and we are gonna be good. So let me, um, let me pray for you, Nate. Um, guys, again, if you were inspired by this time, encouraged by this time, anything along those lines, tune into the IG live today at 5 p.m. Um, but. Email Nate, reach out to him, DM him, yeah. pull up on him, slide into the DMs. I don't know, whatever you about, whatever type of time you want, pull up on him with that energy um, and, and, and talk to him about what God is doing in his life. It's really going to be incredible. Um, it's an honor, Nate, to support you. We love you. We love you to life. Mm. And we can't wait to see the kingdom expand through your leadership. So let me pray for you. Father God, I thank you so much for our brother Nate. I thank you for the vision you have put on the inside of him, God. Your word says, without vision, the people perish. God, I thank you that people will be saved because of his mm. vision. I thank you that people will not perish, but people will experience everlasting life. God, we thank you in advance for the impact that he's going to make in the Bronx. We ask that TGH can continue to be a place that supports the move of the spirit wherever it is that he goes. Mm -hmm. God, we thank you, Lord, uh, for the generosity of this church. We thank you for the people who call the church home and for the people um, who will call Nate's church home, God. We ask that you will expand your kingdom mm -hmm. in this city. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey family, so for response today, we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, because this is Nate's last Sunday, I invited our entire staff up here um, because we just learned in the book of James the power of the, effect, the effective, fervent prayer of the righteous. And we learned the power of praying in community. So I want to read Matthew 18. In Matthew 18, Jesus says, Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Again, truly I tell you that if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask for, it will be given to them. It will be done by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there I will be with them. I want to pray that over Nate. Um, we are up here today because we are asking God to move mightily in the work he's called to do. So will you bow with me in prayer at home? Heavenly Father, in the name of your thank Son you, and our gracious Redeemer, Christ Jesus, you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness in bringing us to this day. God, I remember when you started Nate's story with us here at TGH, God. Yes, you, God. Are, you have been faithful to see him to the end. And God, now you are calling him out. Thank you that we we say farewell for now um, under great circumstances. Yes, Father, God. we pray your blessing down yes, upon God. Nate, Lord. Yes, God. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would bless him with refined vision Ooh. Lord, for the call that you are calling him to. Father, I pray that all fear and anxieties, God, will be relinquished. Yes, and Lord. And that faith will rise up in yes, his heart, Lord. God. That it will flow over into his core team. Father, yes, I pray that Lord. you will call the people even now. Thank Nate you, Lord. doesn't even know who will be a part of the core team. Yes, Father, Lord. you know, and you know them by name. Mm -hmm. And so, Lord, I pray that you would bring people who are aligned with the vision. Yes, people who are aligned with the mission, oh God, of what you have entrusted into the heart of Nate. God, I pray that he will be faithful. Thank you, God. To see it to its fruition. God, we pray your blessing and your protection over Nate. And we thank you so much for him. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Father, the very first blessing you gave to humanity in the book of Genesis was be fruitful and multiply. God, that blessing was not just for Adam and Eve, but for all of us. For every single one of us that you will use for your glory and for your work in this world. 
And so, God, I pray that promise back over Nate's life. God, I pray that Nate is fruitful and multiplies. I pray that he multiplies the, the marriages um, that he will be used to heal. I pray that he will multiply um, the dignity that he will be used to bring to the block. I pray that he will multiply uh, the breakthroughs that will come to people who were broken before he got there. I pray that he will multiply the businesses and multiply uh, the impact, multiply the development of the community in a way that dignifies the community. That he will multiply the salvations and the baptisms and the people who will be discipled into uh, biblical justice and kingdom expansion. God, I pray God for fruitful multiplication over Nate. God, I thank you for the way that he has been fruitful and multiplied at this church. I thank you for his faithfulness, God. I thank you for his fruitfulness, God. I thank you for his obedience, God. I thank you for his humility, God. I thank you for the ways that he stewarded well little so that you were able to put more in his hand. God, I pray, Lord, for protection over him. I pray for a covering over him. I pray for a covering and a hedge around his vision. I pray against any attack of the enemy, any lie of the devil, any satanic powers that will try to arise and choke out and still kill and destroy the vision you have put on the inside of Nate. God, I pray instead, God, for deliverance, God. I pray for a, a, a breakthroughs, God, and, and blessings, God, and, and power, God, to be poured out on Nate as he goes out to plant this church, God. I pray for a Pentecost move of the Holy Spirit, God. I pray for signs and wonders, oh God. I pray for gifts to flow, oh God. I pray for the Spirit to move, oh God. And I thank you in advance on credit for what you're gonna do, God. Lord, we know that you came and died and rose again, not to leave us and abandon us in our call, but to give us fruit to give us power, and to give us a sound mind as we fulfill our purpose. God, I thank you for the ways you're going to use this church. Lord, I thank you for the ways that Nate has been faithful at this church. I pray that you will give him a double portion, a double portion of the anointing that you put on me and on, and on this house. I pray that he will go out with the spirit of Elisha, that he will have a double portion of the leader he served under. And God, I ask that you will anoint him now, God, with the flow and the faith that he needs to be walking in fullness. Jesus, I pray that like the prophet Samuel, none of his words will fall to the ground. I pray that he will go out and that he will see fruit for every seed that he plants. We thank you in advance. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Nate, and we want to take this opportunity to present this gift to you. We love you so, so, so thank much. You. Hey! <laughs> Hey, TGH, it's my honor to uh, close us out uh, for the last time. Um, I want to remind everybody that uh, the prayer team is waiting for you in the Zoom lobby. Um, you can go there uh, if you want to just like talk with some other people, meet some other people, you can do that. And then our prayer team is there. Um, you can meet one-on-one -on -one with someone and they can pray for you. So please take advantage of that. Come on. But as we finish up, um, I'm going to pray a blessing over you. So yeah. TGH, yeah. once you place your hands, palms up in a posture of receiving, mm. receive this blessing from the Lord. So the gathering in Harlem, may the Lord bless you. Yeah. And may he keep you. May he shine on you and be gracious to you. May he turn his face towards you and give you peace. And may you go back to your day filled with the power of the Holy Spirit in this very moment, empowered to do all that he has called you to do. Amen. And may you do it all in the matchless, yeah. in the powerful, in the resurrected yeah. name of Jesus yeah. Christ. Amen. If you agree with that, say amen. Amen. All right. Go in peace, church.